his third victory in a row. So here we go then, this is what everybody has been waiting for. Jimmy Spithill's Americans defending their crown against Peter Burling's New Zealanders. The match is on, the battle lines are drawn. And this is where it all gets tasty, Kenny. USA with port entry, they get to enter this starting box 10 seconds ahead of their opponents. And the hunt will be on, won't it? It'll be really interesting to see whether Burling is vulnerable in this area, whether Spithill goes after him. Well, it's four years since an America's Cup race. It's really hard to imagine how much effort has gone in for this exact moment in time. Everybody in the world kind of thinks that Jimmy Spithill is going to try to take it to Peter Burling in these pre-starts with aggression because if there's been any vulnerability in Burling's play, it has been in this pre-start. But you know what? They have great coaches over there in New Zealand, and they, they will have been coaching him up what to anticipate, how to either lead back, how to push back, and try to stay out of trouble from kind of the old fox, Jimmy Spithill. thing to keep in mind, Ali, Oracle has been practice starting against Japan, but there's nothing like the real thing. So, you know, that, there's a little vulnerability in there as well. So a different dynamic to the match racing now that it is the match, the pressure, that much greater and so much strain and stress on each of these crews. These moments absolutely critical in the pre-start. And they're back early. Oracle led back very early back to the starting line. Still 48 seconds to kill. And, and look at how close they are to the, to the start line. Any little cunning stunts by the New Zealanders. They have their option right now if they want to push and press and be, and be the aggressors. Very good. There goes New Zealand trying to come in and possibly do a little bit of a hook. So the timing of these maneuvers, as we've seen over the last couple of weeks, absolutely key. Again, Oracle very close to the starting line. New Zealand is laying back here. They're going to pull the trigger several seconds early and try to just have more pace. Oracle is very close to the start and even struggling to keep off of it. New Zealand's going to be going way faster at the start of this America's Cup if Burling does this right. So the Americans are away, but they have a penalty right at the outset. Jimmy Spithill has gone across that line too quick. And Peter Burling will be able to capitalize from here. So Burling actually just hung back there. He can just hang out right now. Oracle is going to have to slow down until there are two full boat lengths behind Emirates Team New Zealand. Unforced error from maybe the two weeks off, that, that little bit of unpractice. And that, the area that so many people felt the Americans would hold the edge in. That start line, the pre-start in itself, they felt that Burling was possibly weaker in that department. But it is the Kiwi boat, Emirates Team New Zealand, who are flying up on their foils towards Mark 1 and already reaching speeds of 30 knots plus. Mark's quite favoured at the bottom, but we'll just have a look when we get down there. Pretty happy left at the moment, one job. So the penalty now wiped out by the Americans, but they're the ones playing catch up. And the New Zealanders out in front at the first mark. Here is what the world has been looking for. We haven't had much of a speed test here so far, but the stability of tacking and jiving. We know Emirates Team New Zealand is very strong in this light breeze, and I think it's, the breeze is down a little bit right now. We're down to about nine knots. Let's see how Oracle competes in this jiving and tacking. These maneuvers compared to the really sharp package that we've seen off of the Kiwi boat. So the first jive from the Americans peeling off towards the other side of the course from the New Zealanders. Look at that setup. Just look at that water. What a venue for top flight sport. One, one part of that start is, is the fact that 
that one. First of all, we call it. I mean, Oracle got so close, so so tight. Pulled the trigger early. Surprised Berwin didn't try to pull the trigger. He just must have thought they were going to be over early and and decided, okay, let's take our let's take our time here. But one part, once you're over early, to just to just try to drop back two boat lengths is almost impossible. It, it's acceleration in light air is such a critical factor and such an unknown that Oracle really had a hard time staying in tight after burning that penalty off. Will be an earliest tech though, copy. Right there we see the grinders of the American crew and the contrast with the Kiwi boat with their guys operating the cyclore system. The legs driving the hydraulic power through the boat. Sit up once the It's worked very well for them as they head round gate two. Very stable, very consistent, very comfortable. You heard Burling say, big game for us, boys. That means it's puffy out there. It's an easterly breeze. It's shifty. Look at that tack. I mean, just almost flawless on the tack. It's just something we've seen on and on and on. We keep talking about it. Puffy, shifty conditions, though. Oracle Team USA went from just behind to quite far behind in no time. Emirates, Emirates Team New Zealand tacks early in order to kind of control the situation and stay in the same water in this puffy, shifty condition. So the New Zealanders with a, a healthy lead at the moment, beyond 150 meters, and seemingly enjoying themselves in these early exchanges. And it's been noticeable, isn't it, Ken, how relaxed they've appeared, both on the water and indeed off it. I, I got to spend some time with them the other night, most of their crew, in just kind of a casual dinner setting, and you'd have thought they were going out for a Tuesday night race at, at their local yacht club. It, it was, it's really something that I guess we shouldn't be surprised anymore. It, it, it's been a consistent theme through this whole event, and yeah, we just shouldn't be surprised. Down the bottom left-hand corner, we see on the race course, that's the, they're going up to gate number three, so that this is just a, this is a kind of a microcosm of the entire really narrow rectangular race course, and that's to show everybody at home in the world where they are in the race course and where they're heading, and they're going up to gate number three. And here the, uh, the difference in the foils is immediately obvious, the kink on yeah. the Kiwi foil. That's Explain right. why well, they've that, done that and what it does. That light air package, both boats with their light air packages in, that, that kink, that big kink uh, over here on, on Emirates Team New Zealand versus very straight. They're quite, they're quite long, all the foils are quite long. The longer, uh, the easier it is to lift and that is definitely a necessity in, in light air. But uh, the bottom line is very different approaches to try to achieve the same thing. So the New Zealand is stretching it out. And sailing a very tidy race at the moment. Happy for a little little build here, 20 seconds. Fly time hey. is good for the New Zealanders in particular. That the amount of time, quite obviously, that their hulls are spending out of the water, minimizing the drag. Not a perfect tack by Oracle Team USA going in. This is actually a, what's called the parrot cam. This is on Peter Burling's shoulder, watching. <laughs> Michael, I, I think if this goes too far, a lot of people at home will be getting seasick. Yeah. But uh, yet another one. I think there's seven cameras on each of the boats, and that is one of them. We're gonna we're gonna find out more about America's Cup sailing and sail oars than we probably ever wanted to know. Yeah, I think that much is that. true. They went, they're not allowed to sneeze without us finding out. One of the benefits of being able to get that close and personal on board Oracle Team USA right now. Two very different power 
power systems, the conventional grinders, gr called coffee grinders on Oracle Team USA. Again, to power what's called an accumulator to build up pressure to make the hydraulic systems work and can't get much more different. It's just an entirely different set of muscles. They're using their legs on New Zealand and Oracle's using their arms. And you were a marquee opponent just the other day, weren't you? The, the totally different body shapes of the two crews on that basis. The, as human beings, different body shapes, and then very clearly different windage. I, I think everybody would agree that the Kiwis are much lower into the boat and have a much, much better windage package because of that system. Keep pressing. Come on. Keep pressing. Come on. Straight forward. Okay, pressure is above you. Go, good pressure in five seconds, just be patient. That's the voice okay. of tactician Happy Tom Slingsby, to start a good build now. who has actually Let's, left his grinding post, building. and he's he's trying to get like his to weight fast. forward in the boat. Really like to be fast in this one. Copy. So every last nugget of information, absolutely key. But it's passed on between tactician okay, and Coming into a really light patch in general. It's looking like a really good start to the campaign up, 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 from up, up, the Kiwis up, as they round gate three and head off downwind again. I've got us going all the way to boundary. Some, some pressure yep. here, please. Boundary job. Yep. Coming. Up. Yep. You hear the voice there of Blair uh, too. Who is mic'd up, I believe, for the first time. So we haven't heard much from this group, and I think go Blair look, you. Yep. probably has a little more here, tactical input than we've right given anybody the, credit for. Yeah, you heard yeah, him say, let's go right to the boundary on this jibe. And great to hear these guys communicating a little more. It makes our life easier. Let's uh, stand by. So now this lead being built to almost 500 metres. And the New Zealanders really capitalising on that, that start line penalty incurred by Jimmy Spithill and his American team. Let's bring in uh, Joey Newton, who's out on the water for us, part of Oracle Team USA. Uh, Joey, just just how damaging was that penalty at the start? Um, yeah, well, I mean, it, it put Oracle Team USA a little bit behind, and it, like Kenny was mentioning, it ends up being more than a couple of lengths, but that combined with the choice to split away um, at the first jibe, and then the race, um, you know, it ended up being what you're seeing now. And the Kiwis are doing a really nice job of just staying in between Oracle Team USA and the next mark, and there's really, unless they make a big mistake, it, it's going to be pretty hard for them to find a way around. They're sailing well. You know, it's funny, Ali and, and Joey can certainly has more experience right now than most of us in, the, in this stuff. But very often you love the first the first race of an America's Cup because you really get a feel for the boat speed. But because the boats have been so spread out, I'm not sure we've learned anything yet. Joey, what, what, have you, any any trends that you see out there in the race course? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty hard to tell. Like you said, the boats have been a long way apart. Um, it'd be hard to argue that the Kiwis are slow. Um, they've, they've done a nice job of extending, but this easterly breeze is super puffy. It's got a lot of geography to get over before it comes down on the water. So there's a lot of shifts, a lot of puffs, um, and that's probably a bigger factor than the boat speed on the water now. Very slick, very in slick. Their coordination. Yep. As we've seen throughout their time here in Bermuda, Peter Burling is running a, a very well organized crew. Worth remembering as well, they start this match a point down. They actually have to win eight races to win the America's Cup here. That on account of the Americans winning the, the qualifying round and gaining an extra point to bring into the match. So, what a terrific start it would be for Emirates Team New Zealand if they can wipe out that point on the opening race. Yeah. 
this place, this America's Cup village, which has been purposely built, including the land that we're sitting on here in Bermuda, has done nothing but be spectacular, not only for us and for the racing itself, but for the literally hundreds of thousands of fans that have come through here. Two, one, here we go. Real soft here, Jimmy. Yeah, wait for us, boys. So here's a little split that's happening right now. Emirates Team New Zealand rounded the other gate. They waited a little bit for their tack. If there's a chance to get back into the race right now, this may be it. Again, it's very shifty on the race course right now. Very puffy, very shifty, difficult for the tacticians. I am, my foot's on. One, go. Got it. So a lot of ground to make up, but one of the reasons that they will have headed off on the in the other direction, having split the course for the Americans, is to try to chase that breeze, try to steal a march somehow or other on the New Zealanders who are just stretching away very, very comfortable at the moment. Who's going to tell that kid he's in the first race of the Americas Cup? Because <laughs> clearly you can't, you can't see it on his face. It's just a quiet weekend drive. <laughs> That's what it looks like. He's enjoying the view, and no doubt he'll be enjoying the one behind him in particular with Jimmy Spithill miles, miles further back. You've been calling it driving Miss Daisy, but I dare you to call any of those guys Miss Daisy. The helicopter is getting too low in front of us. So it's looking pretty straightforward for the moment for our members to New Zealand. They're going to have to make a proper mess of things if they're to blow this kind of lead from here. And you just don't see them making too many errors. Probably, Their uh, error count is really low. Yeah. Look, look at the shape of that foil out of the water. You, if you wonder where really one of the very biggest differences is between these programs, and between Emirates Team New Zealand and the rest of the fleet, it's been in the shape of those dagger boards. It's been a lot of conversation. You had to explain to me why people think it works. I've had the designer tell me why it works. and. He may as well have been speaking ancient Egyptian at the time. That, that's that. <laughs> so let's not pass that on then. <laughs> well, whatever it's doing, it's working. It's Goodness. working it's really, really well. Yeah. They're in total command. This young, fearless team. And Peter Burling very keen to point out at the press conference yesterday, this is a... Almost entirely new crew from the one that suffered that heartbreak in San Francisco four years ago. Glenn Ashby, the only member of that crew who has been scarred in that way. So they carry no baggage here. Well, keep in mind, Glenn Ashby is actually technically the skipper of the boat. He's given a ton of credit, not just for the innovation that we see in this boat. I I've said it many times, maybe thought of as the best multi-hull sailor on the planet. But He's kind of the glue that, that kind of got this program, kept this pro program together through some tough times. And as the kind of quiet voice in the background, I think it's uh, safe to say that Glenn Ashby deserves an awful lot of credit for the success of Emirates Team New Zealand to date and obviously coming out of the blocks pretty well. Yeah. 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 We've been watching Oracle Team USA tack and jive. It doesn't look like they've had any really terrible maneuvers. That's not the best jive for, by Emirates Team New Zealand there. But nothing seems glaring at this stage, although they are kind of sinking down in the water right now. And it's only about seven and a half, eight knots of breeze out there right now. I think they're slowing down to try to cause a bit of a issue with Emirates Team New Zealand. I wonder if they did that on purpose. They would be the lured boat, which is the right-of-way boat, but it is lighter air. You see these guys not even trying to foil right now. 
Let's go back out to Joey Newton. Joey, Breeze dropping. Yeah, it seems to have, Ken. Um, just in the last five minutes, uh, I thought both the boats were slowing down to sort of Jimmy was trying to engage the Kiwis, but it may have been that we're just seeing a real light spot up the top because um, you can see Team USA not even foiling up wind anymore. Should be pretty good there. Yeah, the wind speed has dropped away to around about nine knots. There's Tom Slingsby. Take us or no? A little low now. Okay, we'll take. Oh, well, hang on, something heading, just dramatic hold. has got to happen Pressure coming. on the part of yep. the Americans okay, here. We'll if he's going to find a way back in because it looks like the Kiwis are long gone. Bring rustiness. No, you, 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 listen, in a fluky day like today, this group is not going to be happy. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I think they've proven to the world that there's not a heck of a lot of panic in, the, in this group as well. So one race is one race. They'll regroup. They'll talk it through. I think he'll, Jimmy will be most frustrated with that starting line uh, mistake and, and kind of timing. Might be a little rust, but they have been out sailing every day against Japan and then by themselves the last uh, four or five days. So I'm guessing they don't use any of that as an excuse. Yeah, where do you sit with that, though? Because it can go two ways, can't it? They can be underdone, or, or they could be nicely rested. Fair point. I, I would say uh, they give up the rest for the competition that these guys... I mean, these guys have been in hard case competition for the last two weeks while... Oracle Team USA has been off kind of doing their own thing. Yeah. And no matter how much you practice, presumably it's like any other sport, actually that match competition is everything, isn't it? You got it. So the, the last leg of this apparent Kiwi win. Through the gate they'll go, the finish is a relatively short reach. Coming closer and closer to the shore, and all those thousands of fans, they like to call this stadium racing, and you can see why. They're going to have to do a few more jibes here, though. This is an interesting breeze direction where the setup of the race course is through the bottom gate, and then they have to jibe one more time towards the finish, which is literally smack dab in front of our booth here at America's Cup Village. We're going to hear it, we're going to hear it from the Kiwi crowd, but I'll tell you what, this is not an easy way to finish right now. It's yeah. light air down here, and Oracle is screaming up from behind. Well, that was a, a real, you said it, smack dab. That was uh, one way you might have described that maneuver from the Kiwis. They're building speed, they're sailing very high in order to build speed. They got very slow and very light in those last couple jives. Let's see if Oracle can continue this pace. They're coming in fast right now, really fast. So there is a sniff for the Americans, but it is only a small sniff at this point. Now the boat speed building from the New Zealanders, and they're safely away from trouble. I don't think they're going to lay, though. They have one more jive to go. They're close. I hear Burling saying struggling to lay. He's taking every puff down possible right now. <laughs> Just when we were saying... 500 meters was enough. Yep. Kiwis know how to make it interesting. Well, we've seen it a few times, haven't we, out here in Bermuda? Those last minute panic maneuvers when things are not quite to perfection. But other than a few hiccups towards the end, the New Zealanders have made a storming start to the America's Cup match. Exploding out of the blocks, wiping out that one point advantage that the USA had taking the initiative at the start with the American penalty. And I guess now we can say it is all square. All square, that's exactly right. Wiping out that that point, and that point, for those of you joining the America's Cup, that point was from Oracle Team USA actually winning that ladder round earlier, about two, three weeks ago. They, they won a ladder round against all of the challengers and the winner of that took a point into the finals and actually not taking a point, it actually made your opponent lose a point. So Emirates Team New Zealand started at minus one coming in and now we're all square, back to even and uh, 